In this video, I will try to explain you the world of quantum. I will use the maybe most famous experiment in the world of quantum to show you the special. In the world which is familiar to us, everything seems sensible because the laws of classic physics are ruling it. But everything is different in the microcosm. It consists of particles like atoms and electrons. The microcosm can be explained with the quantum theory. For us human, the microcosm is actually not possible to understand, because it seems that the quantums are ignoring the classic laws of physics and they are acting completely different as we would expect how you will see in the following experiment. It is only a thought experiment, but theoretically possible. The test setup exists of two walls. The first wall has two gaps, from which we can close one if we need to. We also have a cannon, which we can use to shoot different things. Just imagine, we shoot baseballs through this gap in the first wall, and they stick to the second wall. After a while, we receive this pattern of baseballs. If we repeat the experiment with two gaps, we would receive such a pattern. That is how particles work. Everything seems sensible. And now let's do the experiment again. But instead of shooting baseballs, we use light. Light is composed by photons, which are actually small particles. But we all know that light travels in form of waves. Now you see that the two gaps lead the light wave to overlap. The pattern looks like this because waves have the attribute to interfere. Each gap produces a new wave of the first wave. The two produced waves interfere with each other. Now we know two things. We know that particles do not interfere and the pattern seems sensible to us. And second, we know that waves always interfere. School tells you that electrons are particles of the microcosm. It should actually be clear to define where they belong to in this chart. To make sure, let's test their behavioral at the double gap. If we shoot them through a wall with one gap, we receive a pattern which is similar similar to the pattern of baseballs which were shot through the wall with one gap that would support the definition of electrons. Now we put a second gap in the wall and we shoot the electrons through the wall again. After just enough time, you would see a pattern which is similar to this. It looks like the pattern of interference of light waves. Even with a lower frequency of shooting electrons, we would receive this pattern. You might wonder why they now act like waves and why there are electrons on the second wall. You cannot connect directly with the cannon the electrons came out. And if you draw a straight line from the cannon through the gap, it hits the wall at a point no electrons did hit it. You recognize that at the wall with one gap the electron acts like a particle and at the wall with two gaps it acts like a wave. Now let's ask us the question where the electron travels. Does the electron travel through both gaps at the same time and interferes with itself like a wave? To find out we mount a detector at one gap records and beeps if an electron passes the gap he's mounted on. But it is not as easy as it sounds. We repeat the experiment, now with the detector. But the pattern looks like the pattern of baseballs which were shot through two gaps. And if we turn off the detector, not mounting him off, the electron decides to act like waves again. We now stand in front of a big question. 
why does the electron act like particles if we observe it and why does it act like waves if we do not if we could answer this question completely physics and even the whole world would be an enormous step further in its developing process there is one famous interpretation which is called the Copenhagener interpretation it has been developed by Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr in the year 1927. This theory says that the electron travels all possible ways at the same time, if we do not observe it. This is called superposition. Theoretically, if the electron passes the first wall, it hasn't yet decided through which gap it traveled. If we draw arrows, before the wall, in each direction, it reminds you on a wave. Waves also travel in all possible directions. Back to the electron. Each gap divides the first way of possible ways into two ways of possible ways. So behind the gap, both waves of possible ways interfere like all waves do. And at the second wall, we see small dots, which are the electrons, because we observe them at this point. Just before the second wall, the electron still is in superposition, and it always decides to stick on the wall at a different point. After a while, we see the pattern of interference caused by the possible ways the electron travels. But why don't we see the pattern of interference if we mount in detector at the wall? The reason is that we already observe the electron at the first wall. So the electron already has to decide at this point where it traveled through. Caused by this forced decision, it cannot interfere with itself anymore. So if the electron travels through the upper gap, it cannot interfere with the gap below. And if it travels through the lower gap, there is no option to interfere with the higher gap. It is important to understand that not two electrons interfere, but the ways of possible ways of one electron interfere.